Okay, for people who are joining this meeting, we are talking about Wolfram language design for symbolic music. So, um, let's look at the questions here because these are the immediate questions I have. Yep. Ah, this isn't going to cut it. I mean, we, we, we need a compatible design. We're not going to just make a completely new design. So, um, uh, whatever. We'll, no, no, not the right design approach. You know, we'll, we'll figure out what we need, and then we'll figure out how to make a bridge. We're not going to say, oh, no, we're going to deprecate this. Not, not the no, no, no. Uh, that was not the, the, what was intended. Uh, the two designs should talk to each other, and sound notes should be understood by one framework, and the potential new design should be understood by sound. Yeah, uh, all right, okay. I'm just saying that the specification is, is not very compatible with uh, uh, what we have in mind for now. And I think the objection was more about making sound note uh, backwards compatible, not breaking from what we have had for a very long time. I mean backward compatible. Yep. What What do you mean backward compatible? The the sound we don't want to make changes in sound note that any other previous specification is not going to work anymore. Of course. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay, let's launch into the proposed architecture. So, so I'm trying to understand a couple of things. So in Wolfram Alpha, I mean, there's one thing is reasoning about music, and the other is, uh, you know, actually rendering music. Is that a fair statement? I mean, in other words... Yeah, so, so for, for reasoning about music, there is some code. For displaying uh, and rendering music, there is a very, very limited set of capabilities that we have. The whole music typesetting problem is pretty gigantic. And yeah, I'm aware. Yeah. I'm aware. I mean, I know we interacted with the Lily Pond folk long, long ago, and we've interacted with other people who do this. I mean, it must be a decade ago. Um, I see. And that should be... Um, 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 but let me give some examples of things. I mean, so in Wolfram Alpha, we clearly have, you know, I mean, it, I can say, you know, a B flat minor scale or something, and it knows what I'm talking about. Sure. Right. And presumably that's part of this design as well. Sure. Those things should, we, should be present in the system as knowledge, right? No, 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 no. But what I'm saying is, just like we have synthetic geometry and we have actualized geometry, right? We need yeah. a similar kind of thing for music. That is, we need to be able to say, you know, I have an abstract, you know, scale of this kind and so on. Right? Just like we can in Wolfram Alpha. I mean, if we go to Wolfram Alpha, we can, um, you know, we can say, you know, we can say, is there a minor scale? I don't know. I don't know my music theory well enough. Or I did once, but I don't know now. But okay, there we go. Okay. So now, you know, all the things that are here should be readily computable. Is that part of your design or not? Uh, I mean, it depends on how this would return. This, in, with this design, this could return a list of music notes. And then you could easily compute intervals between them. Um, right. I mean, so for example, yeah. I'm not seeing here any of the functionality I would expect to see. That is things like take a music note. Okay. So what you have is a concept here of a pitch. And yeah, I'm not buying a lot of this stuff. Okay. So. And, and why is this any different from sound note? So first of all, the pitch specification is different. Second of all, the duration. Well, why is it different? I mean, can't I just say sound note of C? Sure, sure. Okay, fine. The, the numbering is is different. What numbering? I don't see any numbering here. Sh sure, the numbering that we would use. Uh, this, the numbering that is used in sound note 
is something that exists exclusively in sound note. What is usually used is the MIDI numbering system. For Who cares? We, we've got a MIDI numbering. We can use MIDI numbering. We can perfectly well... No. <coughs> that works just fine. That is not MIDI numbering. Um, that is different. There is a, it replaces okay. an offset that is not present in any, in any other kind of numbering. Okay, well, fine. I'm not it's sure just that's an offset. Important it's, thing. Not, right. it's not problematic. <coughs> I mean, However, the specification that we would like to, uh, a specification level that we would like to have is not just uh, specifying the pitch. Uh, it would be nice to be able to specify separately the pitch class and the octave, for example, and potentially alterations to that pitch as a separate attribute. Um, what kind so of? That is the simplest case, I would say. Wait, so hold, hold on, hold on. The renderer that we have for this. Are we making our own renderer, or are we using some kind of system renderer? Uh, you mean for playing or for this? Yes, for playing it. Uh, at the moment, we are using a MIDI synthesizer. That, okay. that so, is but MIDI has detailed. we just uh, to play sound. Uh, we temporarily export a MIDI file and play that MIDI file with the synthesizer. But so the things you're proposing, which are annotations to the notes, are things that are representable in MIDI or not? Yes. Um, I mean, at the time when we originally built this stuff, 30 years ago, right, there mm -hmm. were many limitations on what MIDI could represent. Absolutely. And for example, the, what I was saying about pitch class and octave, those two are relevant for MIDI, are just a different way to represent a single note, right? There's nothing different from saying C, C4, or saying pitch class C and octave 4. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, I, one of the ideas behind having a, a more complex representation of pitch is that it would allow um, okay. Let me analysis call spade a spade. applications. You know, all of this audio generator stuff, I do not use, right? I okay. find myself using, you know, things where I'm just saying play a function because it's too damn complicated to figure out how to use that stuff. Let's not repeat that mistake. Okay, okay, that stuff is, is, is fine, low-level stuff. It's not what we should expose to users. I mean, I have no idea why I'm using, you know, audio generator of sign. It's because we have some partial language, right? We don't have a full language that we can use. We, we only have a partial language. We're just having some particular generators, right? Uh, no, you could uh, put a check and arbitrary function there. Well, then why isn't it just, I mean, okay. Uh, I mean, you, I, I find this really difficult to use. I'm not. I'm okay, not so maybe the, we need to improve the documentation because what you're saying is completely allowed. You you could you, this supports any kind of uh, function that produces. Uh, okay. Then why do we have both play and this? So play um, does not generate an audio object, right? Well, that is correct. Yeah, but, right now, what does it generate? It, yeah, it, it's a sampled sound object. What's yes. the difference between a sampled sound object and an audio object? Other than an audio one object, was built by one team and one was built by another team. Well, I mean, uh, one uh, can uh, support files, the other cannot. One can support different types of data. Why, was, why was sampled sound not just turned into an audio object? Why was play not made to just return an audio object? I mean, other than the people couldn't be bothered to, to change it we could easily do that. I don't know, that decision was made before I joined. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm pushing back very strongly on this idea of, you know, I mean, we need a design that is going to work. You know, the existing design is very usable. Something where everything has to be annotated, you know, 65 times isn't going to be usable. So let's not break what we already have, which is quite usable. So, okay, uh, the, the one um, argument that I would have against that point um, is that uh, you're seeing a lot of complication right there. I, I agree with that. However, um, my main reason for this complication is that in my mind, main source of uh, music is existing files, scores that one already has, rather than the user painstakingly. Okay, but I'm not sure that's the right, the right approach for us. I mean. I agree that the analysis of existing scores is interesting. Yes. So we need a way to represent existing scores. Yes. But much of that representation will be under the hood because 
you know, you import a score, I'm hoping you'll get something which visually looks, mm. I mean, you know, where basically what we have is some kind of music object. Yes, and that was the idea to hide this complication in an output form if you just import stuff, right? Right, but to me, the, the, you know, graphs are a good example of something somewhat like this. That is, if you look at, you know, if you make a random graph, you know, here, I actually don't know and don't care what the input form of this is. See what I'm saying? Okay, it's some complicated thing with sparse arrays, right? But the reason I don't care is because the accessor functions, I mean, I'm, I'm always using this with various kinds of accessor functions. So I'm saying? Yeah, so I guess the idea that I had in mind was like different, where rather than building a gigantic list of music specific functions, have uh, instead having an architecture of uh, reasonably simple heads that then can be used with functional programming and the usual replace, nest, map, and all that kind well, of thing. Yes, we need that. But I mean, that that's okay. So maybe that's sufficient. I don't know. I mean, you know, to what extent? should we think about music like we think about geo positions? That is, is music, does music relate to audio as geo positions relate to graphics, for example, or relate to geometry? Is that a reasonable analogy? I would say not. Uh, the, the direction between music and audio is much fuzzier than geoposition and graphics. Explain. Um, there is a lot of um, performance dependent on the, the audio output and how it relates to the music. Like the same score can be interpreted in thousands of different ways. You can do different geo projections. You can do different geo projections. Sure, that is a valid point. But, but let's Maybe I misunderstood your, your argument then. Well, no, I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to understand because what we do, you know, I mean, it's an interesting thing to what extent we've been able to use geometry to um, uh, um, you know, to deal with geographic objects. But, but okay, l l l before I keep objecting, let me, let me look at what you're, I, I mean, part of what we need to do, okay, you're thinking very much about playing music. There's also the pure symbolic computation of, of things, like these scales and so on. I mean, music theory, the things you need for like doing, thinking about music theory. Absolutely. Just like, go ahead. And, and the whole music theory uh, angle that I had was uh, biased from like importing scores and analyzing those scores within music theory lens. Okay. Uh, right. That is the kind of application that I. I right. I, but we also got to have the simple case of just doing, you know, music theory as we can in Wolf Malfa, for example. I uh, mean, that, that is not as much as what music theory has a bunch of facts about a music object. Um, no, but there's a certain amount. I mean, look, look, if I do this, um, I, right? That needs, working. things like that need to work. Sure, sure. Okay, that, that's fair. And that's, for example, the primitives about the pitch, right? Uh, about how pitches interact with each other and how you sum them and computing intervals and, and having named intervals to uh, move from pitch to pitch. Right. Well, that makes it seem a little bit more like date objects. I mean, it's like saying, you know, today plus, you know, yes. three days, right? And, and I mean, this is, I was wondering how much can we borrow or steal or... Uh, add, I guess, to quantity, both in terms of pitches and durations. Do we have anybody here who's, who, who uh, is an expert on the quantity framework? I don't think so. I think we have used it a lot. But so I don't, know I don't think, why not? Yeah, I mean, I would think that, um, um, right. So, so, I mean, to me, 
it's important that we be able to have something like where you can say something like, you know, music note B flat or something. And then where that comes back as some symbolic object. I mean, for example, one question is, should music notes be entities? Well, that is... Uh, this is, I mean, is is more similar to the to the date object, yeah. Where you have the like, for example. Yeah, I kind of agree with you. Here, I think it's more. Here, similar. you need internal options to define the scale and some some other things. Like yeah, so I think it, I think it might be more similar to a molecule or something where we're not where that is not where there is an entity version of it. I mean, I could imagine something yeah. where there is an entity. I, that duality. What's that? I could see that duality having both as a, a, an object and an entity. Uh, that seems reasonable. Um, what, one thing that we were kind of, um, I, I kind of thought it would be pretty important is being able to under specify all these objects. Like for example, you're saying music note of, uh, B flat. That is an excellent example. A music note, uh, could have attributes that span both the pitch and the duration. And in this case, you only specified, uh, the pitch and that is a perfectly valid object. So yeah. that is one of the properties that we want to preserve. Well, I mean, I would, I would, I would have assumed that, you know, this thing, if I just hit shift enter, is going to be a generic B flat. It does not saying if it's being played in a trumpet. It's not saying if it's exactly. lasting ten seconds. It doesn't say what octave it is. Right, uh, just like in a geometric characteristics, I would say. But but in a geometric scene, I can say there's a point labeled A, and I say nothing about where it is. Yes, right? same kind of thing. Okay, so then for this, I should be able to do computations with this, like add five semitones or something. And um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm assuming that we actually have the notion of five semitones here. Yes, um, we do. And, um, and then... We will need to expand on that. That's because there are, there are named intervals as well. Right, that could be. right. So, so that's an interesting question. I mean, plus, uh, you know, a major fifth, for example. I mean, if I type in, I, I wonder whether this, whether it does anything. If I say major fifth. I could argue that this could also be a, a nice head, like music interval, and then it takes whatever of those. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, to have uh, that be a music interval, because I think then if, if the concept is, and, and maybe that's a little bit like a date, go ahead, what were you going to say? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree. It, it should be like uh, the, the whole... Uh, difference between um, an absolute date and a time difference. It's the same kind of thing, absolutely. What I was going to say is this whole computation of, with pitches, this all uh, hides away um, all the subtleties about tunings and temperaments. Indeed. Absolutely. Just like, but, but I would like to point out to you that the same is true with geopositions. Right? Yeah. If I give a geoposition, that I'm not telling you what datum that's in, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this is what I'm saying. We should be able to uh, compute all of these complicated properties, et cetera. But as you were displaying before, we should have an easy access version of it that uh, hides all, all of those away as, for example, default values for options and stuff like that. Right. But I mean, things like temperament is precisely, is very, very close to me to, to datums for, for, uh, geodata? It kind of is. It kind of isn't in the sense that with different temperaments, the you might get different names of notes as well. Um, Why? If, it, if you do it, it with more, literal uh, hertz, sorry. you would do that. But you know, not if you're dealing with the notes symbolically, right? It doesn't make any difference how it's tuned. No, it but, does. It does. For example, uh, you could have a... a a B flat or an A sharp, they could be different notes. Oh gosh. Depending on the temperament temperament. Despite okay, that's a, that's a subtle thing. So I mean it, exactly in, in this is what MIDI, I'm trying to hide on... No, but wait wait a second. In in usual MIDI, right? Yeah. You know, B flat and A sharp are considered the same or not? They should be, yes. I mean they're just a uh, number however, note in MIDI, aren't they? You could specify them as different as um, by uh, defining a note plus an offset. And, and the other thing that I want to point out is that media, as you mentioned before, is a kind of a crude representation of music. Uh, what we are yes. starting to look at to for a better representation of the subtleties of music is music XML that packs much more data about this than... Fair enough. But, but I, th I think the important thing 
you know, the difference between A sharp and B flat is, you know, at the simplest, you know, that is, again, very much the same kind of story as geo grids and all this kind of thing. That is, there's some, you know, there's some way of representing something and ultimately it has to be rendered into a particular frequency. Yes. And that the seems like the same type of thing. Go ahead. The two frequencies can be different depending on... No, no, I, I understand that. I understand. I, I mean, and, you know, with one effectively datum, those two things map to the same frequency and with another, they don't. That is correct. And, and one of them maps to some complicated, you know, uh, you know, thing from a piccolo and one thing maps to something from a trumpet and so on. I mean, they're, they're very different waveforms and so on in the end, that depending on how it's rendered, right? So, I mean, there's in the rendering pipeline, look, there's the symbolic representation of the note in which, for example, for example, one of the questions would be, there's the question, if I type, you know, music note of A sharp, right? It is not going to symbolically know that that is the same as B flat. It's not going to conclude that. Um, it isn't unless you specify a temperament for which that statement is true. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I understand that. But, but then, so there's a question of how that simplification works and so on. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. I mean, it can work in, in equal or something like that. Like the, the, the thing is, it can stay a, a sharp and B flat, but uh, I don't know, for, for date object, we assume a default calendar, which is uh, Gregorian, I assume. Yeah, correct. So, yeah, well, you, so you, could, you could assume the default temper um, temperament I here. And, uh, and, well, I mean, the uh, question is, if you, yeah, right, yeah. exactly. So it, by default, it might work that way. And, and and much like, I mean, much like we do with a calendar, if I say here, if I say, I'm not sure I know how to do this, but if I say date object, how do I do this actually? Today, and then I say um, calendar type. Yeah, calendar type arrow. Boy, why don't we have a more listed here? We have so many calendars now. That's a, by the way, can somebody report that as a bug? Because we've got just a gazillion calendars now. So we might as well uh, advertise that in the autocomplete. Yep, I got it. Okay, so there we go for, for some other calendar system. And I, I don't know what happens. I assume that if we say that, uh, that will be the same day as today, right? Should we, do we, have all, we also have a date equal? Is that, do I remember correctly? I don't think we have a date equal. We have oh, a date. I don't know why I was convinced. Never no, no, we don't. We have, we have other things that will canonicalize that date. Yeah, so one of the one of the fun proposals that the, the proposals that floated around was uh, some kind of music simplifier, as you said, to confirm and uh, um, for well, example, I, I would think that we could specify. do it. Okay, so look, look, there's several different things. So, so one thing would be you imported a score. It's full of all kinds of meta crud, right? All kinds of things yeah. about you know uh, whatever, and all you want is I just want the sequence of notes and I'm going to do some yes. whole elaborate analysis on it. Absolutely. This is a crucial application. I agree. Right. But, but I mean, but then, you know, you might also want to study the metadata. Yes. Now, I mean, again, the thing we never got to, right? So, so in Wolfram Alpha, you know, we're dealing with individual notes. We're dealing with scales, things like that. We're not dealing with pieces of music. Yes. Correct. Um, and and so what you're proposing here, so so you have a hierarchy here, presumably. Music score is presumably the the highest level in the hierarchy. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Correct. And um, uh, okay. Uh, and you can a, a rest is at the same level as a note. Is that yeah, right? Yes. About indentation, I couldn't figure out a good way to indent everything. What's that? I couldn't find a good way to indent properly. But yeah, yes, okay, but so fine. But I mean, the, the hierarchy is. You know, a score contains multiple voices. A voice is made from a sequence of measures, um, and the measures contain sequences of notes. And each measure would contain things like um, what signature is being used, and so on. Is that right? And the, which might yeah, be I think the signature down. could be a property of the voice, and then it is inferred for each measure belonging to that voice, et cetera, et cetera. But yes, um, yes, what you're saying is correct. 
But then when we have down to the raw note, the raw note could be, you know, you write C, but it's actually given the signature, you actually mean a different note. Isn't that correct? Um, not really. Like uh, a, it, the, 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 the key will just uh, um, it, it affect how the note is displayed. But if you write C, that is a C, the, the, the key signature. Of the of the voice doesn't affect the note. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Am I totally confused? I mean, if if there's a if there's a key signature and it has a bunch of sharps marked on the you know when you write out the music. Right? Yes, but but that affects just the rendering. That just means that when the note is displayed on the on the score, you don't have to repeat that sharp every time you play it. No, but I understand that, but but sharp. but 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 when you write the score in I mean, when you just write it out, okay, you're saying when you give that score in MIDI, I would write C sharp. But when I write it out in, you know, in handwritten music, I don't, I just write the, the you know, the C, the note on the C line, so to speak. Yeah. And the point is that the key signature at the beginning of the of the voice is just kind of a shorthand notation that means... No, I, I get it, I get it. But you're saying that one wouldn't ever want to say, here's the thing... As it will be written away from the key signature, so to speak, now apply the key signature. You're saying whenever you do that on a computer, you, um, I mean, what, what music theory I ever learned was long before computers did these things. And by the way, the person that really here is expert about music theory is Philip. I, I know some, Rebecca knows more, Philip knows everything. Okay, so we've got a hierarchy of people as well as of, of um, exactly. levels here. Yeah, okay. I don't, there's never a useful reason to, to um, uh, you know, put a note in as C if what you mean is C sharp. Okay, fine. Um, yeah. It's only for the writing, it's only when you write it out by hand that you would do that. That's right. So you'll never store store a C sharp as a C. Okay. Like uh, the sharpness is an attribute of, the, of C. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. It's a uh, it. distinct thing. Yeah. So, but on the other hand, um, yeah. All right. Fine. Okay. So, so, what what do we want to start? So, so one thing is the symbolic version of a music note that presumably would display with some blob, and would have the ability to be specialized to a particular octave, to a particular you know tuning system, etc., etc., etc. But and, and one could argue that those should be. Uh, the specification should happen within the pitch, not the note, um, right? So you say music note of music pitch. So you nope, say, nope, you don't get to do that. That's that's making crud that will make it unusable. Um, okay, that's making crud that's making it unusable. Don't go there. You know, maybe it can turn into something like that, but that's not what you're going to enter. Fine, sure, sure. The entering mechanism is could be different. Uh, I'm, what I'm talking about is the internal representation of it. What is inside that blob? Well, fine. It, as I said before, I don't think it matters so much what's inside the blob if there are things that say, for example, let, you say, what I'm not seeing here is a property that just says frequency or something or whatever we, whatever we want to call that. Right? I want to get out. I want to know, you know, in, you know if, if this was, uh, you know, a pure tone, which won't be what it's rendered as in, in, in the, you know, a typical music font, right? Were it rendered as a pure tone, what frequency will it be? Yeah. That's the kind of thing we've got to be able to get out from. And presumably, that's the kind of thing where we'd like to get that out. For a music score, we'd like to be able to say, you know, were this being rendered by an extremely boring instrument that's just generating pure tones, what would the sequence of pure tones be? Absolutely. Um... And then presumably what we want is just like audio. I mean, if I, if I say, um, you know, if I say speech synthesize, you know, if I'd say this, I'm presumably, I'm going to get an audio object out and I can, you know, um, and so presumably what's the analog of that? Um, in, I'm just thinking about this. So, so presumably we'll have a music synthesize, which will generate an you audio object in the sound same way. take that um, as an input, right? 
and transform it into a playable sound object. No. What are you saying? I don't understand. What are you saying? Uh, so, so what you're saying, you, say you have your music, music score. You want something that plays it, right? Is that correct? Yeah, just a second. Let me move yeah. this. Boy, that's a different music there. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Sorry, what were you saying? So you have a music score. You want to transform it in something that plays, right? But there are two forms of playing. One is sampled sound, an audio object. Um, another is... Um, so the MIDI representation, the MIDI playback, that can be converted to sampled sound by just sampling the output of the synthesizer. And that is what audio of sound does. If you do audio of sound node, that should already work. Okay. So, okay, so fine. So if I say table sound... Uh, uh, that's not what I mean. I, I mean, think sound you will of table. Want sound, sound of table. Yeah, sound of table. Okay, so let's say sound note I point one table I ten or something. Yeah, that's I don't know that I set. Okay, and then if I say spectrogram of that, what a mess. Yeah, the synthesizer is not amazing. Well, I don't know what that, I, I can't tell whether that's a mess. But the, I mean, are we using some kind of sound music font or something sound font to do these? Or is that how does it work? Yes, yes there yep. is a sound font. Yes, there is. Okay. That. okay, fine. So, so that's the way. So, I mean, we're we're agreeing then that something like music score. I mean, in the end, we'll be able to say something like. Audio of music score, is that yeah, true? Yeah, that seems uncontroversial, as long as we have a synthesizer that, I mean... It, it, and and yeah. already, a lot of our audio functions take the sound object in anyways. I guess they could eventually get music scores as well and just render them. Right. I mean, I, look, I, I'm not totally opposed to having a, a music note separate from a sound note. Not so, totally opposed, but I'm a little bit... I'm unhappy so, about it. The big issue with sound note, in my opinion, well, the, as I said, the pitch issue is pretty minor. The duration issue, um, sound note takes a, a duration in actual seconds, which is as far as possible as from the uh, duration kind of notation that you get in, in a score, where the duration is relative to the measure and to the, uh, to the tempo as a subdivision of the tempo of the score. Right. Uh, By the way, I, various I, people I, on our live stream are mentioning a whole bunch of uh, systems that uh, I'm sure many people know something about, like Super Collider. No, I think nobody's mentioned Max MSP, but they might have done. Um, and uh, uh, you mentioned Music XML. Um, but Super Collider and Max MSP don't deal as much with uh, symbolic music. Right, they're more dealing with audio, um, yeah. and they are, and, and the capabilities we have for audio, we believe cover those quite well. Is that a true statement? I would say that is reasonable. Yeah. I'm sure there are some things that we cannot do that they can do. I'm sure there are some things that we can do that they cannot do. But it's, I would say, it should be reasonably comparable. Um, uh, the thing that is missing uh, that we don't have is real time application of those things. Um, yes. Okay. So I mean, right, and there are questions about, uh, you know, formal theories of harmony and things like that, and how you would apply those to, to, I mean, you know, we would like it to be the case that if you specify a little piece of music, you can go and, you know, add in, I don't know what they all are, you know, inversions and this is and that. Automatically generate a counterpoint from melody and stuff like that. Yes, and I mean, but presumably the way that would look for us is, there would be something which is a, uh, okay, I, actually, let me ask a naive question. Is there a standard string version of a piece of music, or is there no standard string version of it? I string as in, I don't mean a stringed instrument. I mean, a, you know, something like, uh, you know, is there a standard way of writing out a musical score? Just like for chemicals, you know, there's something like smiles. There's a standard way for writing out a chemical. As there's, not, there's not one standard. Um, I mean, you could argue that music XML is the closest to the standard. Okay, fine. But it's an XML, which is a big, 
a hairy creature. Yes, it is. Right. So it's not something where people type it in. Oh, it's a quick way to type it in. Just like for molecules, you could use smiles to type them in quickly, so to speak. Yeah, there's a notation uh, system uh, that you, Lily Pond uses. That's 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 t just strings of text. Is it reasonable or is it grotesque? It's very reasonable. It's very usable and it's programmable. I mean, it's expensive, you know, extensible and and it just it, yeah, it's a notation that that you can parse very very readily and, and you can parse by eye as well. So, um, Fine. okay. I, so it's something people might, I mean, people who actually, okay. When people actually write music, do they always use, you know, I mean, I guess some, uh, you know, in modern times, do they always like just point and click with a GUI or do they sometimes type in this, this textual form? I mean, I'm assuming a lot of people just record MIDI, right? You could input it from a keyboard. Right. Um, I, I think, and, and Rebecca and, and Philip, correct me if I'm wrong. I think the, the options are uh, one, record it from a keyboard, two, use a graphical interface like Finalis, Sibelius, or Musica, where you can place your notes on the staff. Right. Okay. So it's so not, people are not like, it's not like command line music programmers. Come so on. actually, so Lily Pond, uh, very frequently you'll you'll write write your score as text. It's actually okay. So that is a case, but that does happen. Slightly more obscure and, case. No, no. I, well, okay. So if you use if you're going to be creating scores, um, I mean, it's a lot of com uh, computer specialists who go in get into music. They very quickly gravitate toward Lily Pond because because of that, that programmability. Okay. Yeah. Question, for, for things like all the Max MSPs and Super Colliders and so on of this world, we presumably already have exchange formats that work. Like MIDI is an obvious exchange format that we've had for 25 years or something. Is that correct? Yeah, you could play a MIDI file from Max MSP. Right, but I mean, is there, is there some other higher level form? I mean, do they deal with music XML? Or Max not? MSP is geared towards live performance, right? So. Um, the, the two um, uh, ways of controlling parameters in a synthesizer live are MIDI and, uh, oh God, I'm forgetting the name of the other protocol that is more recent. Uh, let, let me Google it. I forget the name completely. Okay. In any case, the, um, okay. So l let's come back to what we need to figure out here. So, so again, the rendering of, I mean, you know, we have these symbolic names for notes. We have the question of how the notes would be rendered into frequencies, which depends on tuning systems and so on, if I'm not mistaken. Right? So, so I'm not seeing here, oh yeah, well, you do have tuning system right there. You could argue that those could be properties of the objects, right? Yeah, or I agree. So, I mean, I, I think it would be just like we can say geoposition, blah, 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 and we can say, um, uh, what is it, geo, what is it called? What, what is the thing called when you set the datum for a geo position? I think maybe just give it directly in the geo position. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, the datum is just a second argument to the geo position, right? By the way, the other protocol to control synthesizer is um, um, open sound control, OSC. Okay. But I mean, so, so this is this is what... Okay, so this tells us, given this, these geo coordinates, that will tell us what the actual position relative to the center of the Earth is. Mm -hmm. right? And it's the same type of thing here. What the actual frequency will be determined by the tuning system, presumably. What, what, I'm, what I'm trying to spitball here is like if you say music note of B, and then as a, for example, sub value, you ask for a, a frequency attribute, should that work? Yes, by default, this should that thing should have default values. Absolutely. But that, that's you know the middle octave, and it's the. You know, uh, that way, I completely know. What I'm asking is, should this should this sub value kind of thing be the way to do it, or should we have specific functions? I'm not sure. I think we may need some functions. I mean, yeah. in the case of dates, we have this notion of date value. Yeah. Right. I mean, it depends how ornate these functions get. 
Yeah, the, the, the advantage of the subvalues is that we don't have to introduce a, a, a gigantic flurry of functions. I know, but, but the question is how many functions? If there are three or four, we might need it. Yeah. Um, right, but okay. But so, so here, these are defaults. They won't be, I mean, unless what we imagine is that there's going to be some association that gives, you know, things like tuning system, which is a possible way to do it. Uh, we were we were kind of toying with the idea. Uh, you were saying music note of B. Um, one alternative that we had that is kind of cumbersome and clunky, as you were mentioning, is saying music note of association of pitch goes to B. No, um, no. I mean, come on, guys. Let's make it usable, okay? I mean, so, yes. Again, can, I am. I am into that as a canonical okay. form, but it's not going to be that that you enter that. Okay, no, no. So I was talking about the the, the internal representation. Uh, the music note of B should be a valid input system for all of these options, right? Uh, right. There's no arguing about that. Most people on our live stream are talking about real time stuff and are, and are pointing out this um um uh um. Um, let's see, uh, uh, pointing out that, um, um, just a second. Um, um, Let's see, pointing out things about real-time stuff. And, and one of the things that I guess I don't really understand is if you even say speak and we're speaking and you know the system is speaking, th there's, that has been sent to the operating system and is happening as a separate process. And how do you, how do you interrupt this? How do you, how do you imagine any kind of real-time feedback loop? So speak is something that was present before. And yes, we don't have any control. It. It's... It's thrown to the operating system and it doesn't, it's, there's nothing we can do about it. However, the whole uh, uh, framework that we built on which the playback from the audio object is working on, uh, for example, the video GUI that we have uh, mm -hmm. uh, relies on streams that in principle, you could up and append some kind of function that affects the outputted values in real time. And we've had prototypes. Um, the, the issue that we have had with the prototypes using kernel functions is that they are probably not uh, efficient enough. So we are kind of looking at a combination of the new compiler and using um, FFmpeg filters um, to do this kind of. Let work. me understand what the problem is. So the problem is you're playing back a video. I mean, right now, if it's in a notebook, it's fully under our control, and you can just stop sure. it if you want to. Right. So, 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 so let, let's talk about audio objects since it's less data. Or, or if, I well, guess audio it, is a more difficult case because an audio thing could be, if I understand correctly, like a, a beep. You know, if I have a series of beeps, if I make a hundred beeps, then it's just beeping, and it, it already sent that to the operating system, and I don't have a way to interrupt it, do but, I? But we do have this audio stream concept that uh, represents uh, a way of sending stuff to the operating system buffer by buffer where we actually have control over each buffer. No, I, I understand that. But look, look, here's the, here's the practical problem. I send a thousand beeps, okay? Then, and, and they just, boom, they've, they're sent. And it's going, my computer is going beep, 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 right? Then I want to say, speak hello. But my computer is still beeping. I can't interrupt the beeps. They're already out in the operating system. And, you know, cycling through and beeping. And I can't tell it, no, now I want to speak something. Yeah, but what I'm talking about is a kind of different system, right? You're, you're saying about generating all the data and throwing it to operate, the operating system. That's not exactly how it works, right? You, 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 what we have in this, in this audio stream kind of framework is you generate, say, 4,000 samples, 0.1 seconds per time. And, and you control each 0.1 seconds at the time. So you say you have sent... Uh, 10 beeps, and now you're, you, you're, you're getting bored of them, you're, you can just say, okay, don't send buffers anymore, or send buffers with a different well, but You say you just say that, but, but look, we've got an actual pipeline. We've got a notebook, which is running in the front end. It's sending stuff to the kernel. 
what, who's, who's doing what here? The kernel is controlling what stuff goes to the operating system. What is the content? But the kernel has already finished its execution by that time. So there is a I mean, callback. Each buffer uh, is, is sent because of a callback. I see. So that kernel, there's a thread that's, that's separately running that isn't the thread that I'm evaluating 2 plus 2 in. It's some other thread. Is that right? Yes. yes. And in fact, if you play uh, an audio object and you evaluate something at the same time, the playback goes on. I understand. But if I do another playback, does it interrupt the first playback? No. Okay, but that's what's wrong, right? That's the point I'm making. That's wrong. Understand? That's that's the whole point. That's the point I'm making. You don't want your computer to just go on yakking, 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 yakking. And now I want to do something different, but I can't do that because my computer still has the text of war and peace that it's trying to speak. But, but you you, you can pause the playbook, Stephen, anytime. No, no, no. I'm saying something like speak that has no UI. But, but speak, we have to forget about speak because we no, don't. I, I understand speak. that. I'm saying a thing that the, or emit sound, one of these things that has no UI. You understand what yes. I'm saying? Yes. And, and again, audio stream is the one. And um, again, if you have a single stream, you can uh, control the content of each buffer separately. I, I, I don't care about can control. I want to know. I've done a thing. It doesn't have a UI. It's just generating sound. My computer is going whatever it's going, right? Yeah. Now I do another thing. I'm asking, can, does it right now interrupt the previous piece of audio and start playing the new piece of audio? Or does it insist on finishing the previous piece of audio before the new piece of audio is played? Neither. If you are Neither. separate streams, it then it, they will play at the same time. If you do this, the, the whole, the both things in the same stream, it will finish and then play the other. Okay, but, but we're not specifying a stream. I'm just saying beep, for example. Right? Or I'm just saying emit sound. I'm not explicitly specifying yeah. a stream. Okay, those things are completely uh, independent of each other. And this is why they are inadequate, right? It, this is what well, you're saying. So maybe we should be using a different mechanism for those. But the whole point is, the bottom line is, presumably the default behavior. Okay, so there's two possible defaults you might want overplay so to speak and and you know preempt i think we even have that isn't doesn't emit sound have those have those options even i think undocumented yes okay i mean have you guys looked at emit sound and so on or did you just build your own um so we wanted more control as you said because of what you were no, saying i understand that but you didn't you didn't make we, the right we, we have we, we have looked at it, but it wasn't an easy, quick transit. In fact, we started developing uh, from the old stuff, but uh, it was in an inadequate and it wasn't easy to just convert all of those. Right. So that's the thing that we got to be looking at. I mean, we yeah. can't just build a third system here, right? The... No, no, no one is arguing about building a different playbook system. Absolutely. Okay. And and right. so far, the way I've been looking at audio as well is that at some point it it becomes a primitive of sound, and I think music could become a primitive of sound. Sound could be the uh, outer container of all of these. Yeah. Right. At some that, point. That define well, yes, that defines the relative timing of when these things are being generated and so on. Yep. Because you also might want to mix something that is coming out of an your audio generated thing that I still think needs some design work. Um, and uh, uh, you know, and something that's coming out of music, and something that's coming out of speech. Mm -hmm. You might want all of those together. So, actually, now I'm curious. How do you do? And I, I, there's something I don't really see much of, but synthesize singing. How would that work? Ah, uh, uh, I I do not know. Um, I think you can do it um, from the operating system synthesizer. There is... Um, but that's a place where you want to overlay speech and music. Yes. Um, uh, Rebecca looked at... Um, uh, what is the, the name of the XML file to control those things? 
Is I don't some... really remember. Is that was a while ago. I don't know. There is some XML language where you could add attributes to uh, phonemes or words uh, in see. terms of pitch. The SSML? SSML, yes. Yes, right, right. Yes, we looked at that. I remember that. Yeah. Um, okay. Steve, our live stream is commenting that beep will sound over a speak. Okay, um, and Ethan is commenting that emit sound has some undocumented overlay or something. I think it has. Maybe we should find out what they are and document those things. I don't know why. I, we I no, we looked at it. I don't think all of them worked the way we expected. That's why I'm saying it's and it may also very be different on different operating systems. Exactly. I'm all for it, Stephen, but just that it's not an easy project. <laughs> Okay. All right. Fine. All right. So, so the first point here is we've got this notion of a, of a symbolic music note. What I'm not seeing here yet is these actual operations. Um, Sorry, I was meaning that the thing that I had in mind is that all of the uh, operations or most of the operations should be achievable with the usual functional programming zoology. Um, Cases, pattern matching, um, uh, replacement. Absolutely, yes. But but then, okay. Well, so so th this is a question of whether you know whether it's like graph where you don't expect that to work because it's a different structure. Yeah. Whether it's more, is music a list of notes? Answer: Not completely. It's got chords. It's got you know annotation and so on, right? And he has mean, a different level of. Uh, just a, a, a temporal sequence. You have things, and you could have things in parallel, which list doesn't really um, uh, right. allow. Right. Well, I mean, right. And I mean, that's what we're doing with, you know, with sound. We've got the notion of things that are chords, right? Because those are, those are. I mean, we we have a notion of a of a time base in sound that. You know, right? You can have a chord by having just two notes that sound at the same time. So the the, the idea of a chord object is actually pretty sensible. Um, well, except it is and it isn't because as soon as you have a chord object, your cases thing, find me all the B flats, isn't going to work. Well, uh, why? Because a chord should be made up of music notes. No, it won't work because you do cases. It will be working at some particular level. It's you know it's not even clear what it would return. Yeah, I was thinking cases of applied uh, with infinity as the last argument. But it won't work. It won't work because the, if if you do that, then you know then then you'll get sort of all pieces all the way down. You'll get the voice that has the B flat. You'll have the the um, the measure that has the B flat, etc. Yeah, et but et you only want mess. the music note that has the B flat. That I, I understand be. that. I understand that. But 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 it's still a big mess. You've got to say music chord either music chord or music note, blah, blah, uh, blah. I'd say that it's just music note. I see. Well, okay, music fine. Could be composed of I'm suspicious about whether this is going to work. Uh, I, mean, I, I am not sure either. Um, right, but so, so let's just think about this for a second, because, because, you know, for example, given a musical score, what are some symbolic operations you might want to do with it? Wouldn't you want to, you know, transpose it into a different key? Yes. Right? Transpose is the, like the obvious. Um... Right. So let's understand what is actually involved in doing that. Because, you know, Philip has made the statement that a C sharp is a C sharp and it's burnt right into the note. So changing the key signature and expecting the thing to kind of ripple through isn't an option. No, like but you have to actually not, go in and change it. That, uh, the transposition is just a, a change of the key signature and then uh, uh, adding an interval to all notes. Well, I understand that, but that's a big, messy operation. I mean, you, you know, yes. there's no very that's obvious right. way to I do this. think it would deserve a separate function for sure. Okay. Um, well, give me some other examples of things you might. Okay, so that's an example of something you know. Transpose this piece of music. Scroll up. I, I had a list of random examples that I, we, we could think of. If you scroll yeah, up, further down. No? I think they were down. Okay. Uh, well, nice no, I think up in the first section. Yeah. Sorry about that. There was an applications that is closed. Ah, oh, okay. That, Those are some at the very beginning. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, or find out what key a piece of music is in, because what is written on the uh, on the, as the, yeah, the effective key based on statistical analysis of the notes. Yeah, and that key could be a time dependent uh, result as well. Um. The complaints from Kelly on a live stream that we're we're too high level, or maybe too low level, starting with notes. I mean, the the point is, the whole point is, there are multiple different, you know, audio, like graphics, like images. You know, there are different levels and forms of representation. I mean, one is, you know, as a, you know, as a as a time series of, of, you know, of amplitude values. This is, you know, a note is a great big thing, like a, like a font character is a great big collection of pixels um, that is supposed to have some meaning. I, anyway, but, but, um, and actually fonts are another interesting example because fonts have styling and so on, right? Which is, um, yeah. in other words, you can do an operation on a piece of text ABC, for example, where all you care about is those characters ABC, having nothing to do with whether they're in, you know, 18 point font of and their italics and so on, right? And so similarly here, that's sort of an analogy to the symbolic music is like operating on those, you know, characters without knowing how they're rendered. Does that make sense? I mean, yeah, that's reasonable. I mean, I mean, there is an, an additional uh, uh, intermediate step between those two levels, which is the interpretation of the musician. So, but yeah, those two steps. What, what do you mean by that? So you have the score as the first basic step and you have how the uh, musician interprets the score and then you have how the musician renders the score, which is how the instrument plays out and is recorded. I don't understand the intermediate case. I mean, in the end, you're going from a score to somebody playing that score. Yes. And what I'm saying is the somebody playing is two aspects, right? One is how that, that for example, what adagio means for interpreting sure. and stuff like that. But, but that's not, how do, we, how do we expect to, you know, it's a big FFFFF thing, right? Somewhere there. Okay, how do, how do we actually turn that into an amplitude level? Yeah, I mean, that, that is one very good question will have some kind of heuristics, I guess, but no, but that's not clear that that's right. I mean, in other words, what you're saying is, okay, so there's a completely different thing. I don't know how people represent that in these, whether those are basically just textual comments in these music XML things and so on. I mean, in other words, those instructions, what are those called in music? Those instruction things, the, the metadata like that, what, what is that? I just, what, what's the name for it? It has a name, right? It's not one name. There's an articulation, uh, dynamic. Basically. Okay, so there's no generic name for the meta. The meta uh, uh, well, you could call it performance data in a way. You know, that, that tells okay, it. fine. Yeah. All right, but, but so then, is there a canonicalization of that performance data? That is, uh, you know, a FFFFF thing. Is that is there some symbolic way of representing that that yes. is commonly known? Those all are chucked into the music XML file as uh, attributes. But but other, but but the adagio or something is that is that a known? Is that you know keyword seventy five or something there, or is that just t typed as letters? That I'm not sure how XML does it. I think it is typed as letters, and then okay. So it's just a textual comment. I'm I'm trying to understand. It's a textual comment, or it's something that's supposed to mean something to the to some symbolic layer of interpretation. That is something that is supposed to inform the playback of, for example, a synthesizer or or a human. So it, it should have a it should have a meaning for even a synthesizer. Well. No, no, I, I understand that. I'm asking the question. Look, okay, we've got several levels here. We've got the, you know, the notes as written. You know, we've got the, okay, we've got the notes as written with certain timing information and presumably some annotation of those notes. You know, play this staccato or something, 
right? That that the annotation can happen at the level of individual notes. It can happen at a variety of levels for measure for whatever else. If I'm not mistaken, is that correct? I think that is accurate. Okay. So, do you imagine that every one of these symbolic objects will have its own collection of sort of potential uh, kind of modifiers that operate at that level? Is that correct? I think so. The okay, one. So then I'm going to ask you the question: If if I've got some overall, you know, FFF specification. And then I extract one note from there. Does that note somehow automatically get that FFF? Or is that note a free floating note that if it were put into a PPP section would be, you know, would be different? You see I what mean, I'm saying? Uh, if we decided these are attributes of the note, then that is uh, very. No, but I'm not asking that question. I'm asking the question how does the inheritance work? What are there things which are symbolically specified, which do not, which are not fully qualified, right? Because they they are they are dependent on context. What that note, what that you know, music note C means depends on a bunch of context. It depends on the fact that it was inside this voice that said it was a trumpet, right? And you pull out that that music note C and you stick it in a thing that says that is a is a violin. Well, does it become a violin or does it end up being a trumpet? A violin, unless the fact that it was a trumpet was specified in the note rather than in the measure. Okay, fine. All right. So then, so then what we're saying is that we've got this hierarchy of specifications where a thing, if it is, you know, a thing itself, unless it has been forced down to have that information. And I'm, I'm sure there are cases of this where we're kind of taking something where there's a a sort of symbolic hierarchy like this, and we are or are not forcing things down. Yes. But, yes. Uh, I I'm would not sure what the other case of this is. Um, so the, the one that has caused many headaches for us um, is how a note, for example, uh, if you have two notes that are tied, what is the representation of that? We don't really have a concrete answer yet. I think we need to think more about it. That is a kind of annotation that informs it is both. It is more of an, a rendering, a score rendering property, rather than a, a playback rendering property. If that makes any sense. But the, the thing which is the 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 the, the over paren between two notes is that what you're talking about? Yes. And 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 what are you imagining? How are you imagining that that would be represented at the symbolic level? It, one of the options would be an attribute of a specific note. So. If How would that work? Exactly. It would be tied to the next note. Um, the next, which next note? Exactly. This is, if you extract it, what does that mean anymore? Does that attribute survive or is it alive only in relationship to... Uh, look, I mean, this stuff must all be have been figured out to some extent in Music XML. So we need to yes. go through... Yes, all, this is what you know, we need to try to understand how we would translate that into our symbolic representation. Yeah, but then, so music XML, they don't really have the problem of a standalone note. So the tie is an attribute of a single note. And it could be a tie backwards or a tie forwards. But this, this is, they don't have the single note extracted from the context problem. For them, for music XML, a note is always in a square. Um, okay, I have a practical question, which is that I'm supposed to go to some other meeting here. Um, and I'm going to, I mean, we've got a lot more to figure out, for sure. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I, one, one thing I want to point out is that uh, we should, one good starting point, as you said, is figuring out music XML and Lillipon notation and being able to do import expert and understanding of those kind of data and that will inform us many decisions i would say right but i also it's very important that we also be able to do sort of the basic music theory stuff that wolf malfa can already do yeah and that we don't have that be so unbelievably complicated that it's you know and i mean basically yeah, these awesome. disembodied notes that are like disembodied symbolic points and things somehow i mean it's quite interesting that that um I mean, you know, curious fact, I suppose, 
is that you know in the historical sequence right people have made maps in antiquity i think music notation comes from about a thousand a.d so it's an early notation but it is um well i'm i'm just trying to understand what what the best analogies are you know to what extent it is like rendering of characters and you know rendering of text to what extent it's like geo positions to what extent it's like dates these are all patterns that we have some understanding of yeah um i mean like like but you know each one of these things has has complicated messy things like recurrent dates like you know geo positions on asteroids that aren't ellipsoidal you know all kinds of weird stuff like that and uh, if I can make a comment that's not particularly useful here, we're only considering Western music theory. Um, so there's a whole gigantic set of music that we're completely ignoring at the moment. Well, what do you mean? Like Balinese gamelans and things that have weird tuning whatever systems or, yeah, or your different ways of notations and different music theory at all, or Indian music or Japanese traditional music. All stuff that I don't really know very much about, but I know it doesn't completely fit in what we're discussing. Well, it'd be nice to not get wrong what we're doing here to the point yeah, where yeah. that's unrepresentable. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, that is a much, much, much bigger question. How to make Western music theory work for other kinds of music or vice versa. And I honestly, I am not qualified to do that. Right, but I mean, it would be nice to know for Music XML, presumably people have poked at that issue. Yeah, would be good I will investigate what Music XML does for different systems of music. Right, okay. Unfortunately, I don't agree that these are the, I mean, the other important set of goals here have to do with doing pure, simple, you know, I want the such and such scale, I want to do this, I want to, you know, these things that are, uh, what, what's it called? I mean, the, the, you know, there are all these kind of theoretical frameworks. Um, like there's this giant book I have, uh, what's it called? Topos of Music or something, which is some, some giant theoretical framework about um, just about thinking about scales and things like that. Um, I mean, there's, there's plenty, you know, even before you start stringing the notes together to make music, there's plenty we've got to be able to figure out. Um, Fair enough. Um, I'm thinking, and, I, I see various comments here from George about, I strongly suspect some of the people on this call are uh, do compose music. So the, we, we might have that. Um, um, let's see. Um, ah, George on our live stream is saying, Indian classical music is not renderable in MIDI. Hmm. Yeah. Wonderful. I mean, I, I, I assume you could because well, the, it may be, but it has it may be tuned. It may have a different tuning system because MIDI, at least when I lost tuning system, a, a different a different number of notes, right? You, the, the whole microtonal quality of Indian. Yeah, I know. So, so MIDI, at least when I last looked at it, which was a long time ago, only had integer note specifications. So you can add um, pitch bending to each note. So uh, you could, I think, represent any kind of frequency, but it is extremely cumbersome. Um, right. Like you don't have a note to note correspondence. Uh, you have several notes correspond to the same note plus different offsets, which mm -hmm. obviously is crazy. Right. Um, okay, what's our next step here? I mean, we've, we've got, it seems like, you know, this was just an introductory discussion. It is. Um, so know, so one, one question that we have is like how to prioritize this over video, right? That is uh, oh, a complicated question because I don't know all the, all the different criteria. But I mean, to me, this needs some design. Yes. Okay? I think that being able to do with the, deal with the sort of individual note basic music theory stuff seems fairly straightforward and so long as we have yes. a design it then, is then... Straightforward, but i just thinking about that i think might hinder then the ability of stringing those notes into a square well, no, no, no. I, I know that's why i'm saying that what i'm suggesting is let's get a design for the whole thing right 
then let's, in terms of implementation, we can start on the basic music theory, which will already be immediately, you know, kind of renderable in using our sound note mechanism. Okay, if we do it right. Uh, yeah, again, the, the whole time control of that is not... No, 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 no. There's no time control. Just All we're doing is we're saying play... Your intent. This... No, 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 no. It's really simple. It's really simple. Generate, you know, I want the sequence of notes that correspond to the G minor scale. That's yeah. it. So what, what I'm asking is you're talking about harmony rather than, than melody, like you, uh, not considering the time evolution. Well, okay. So I don't know. I mean, that's a good question, right? You know, does each note play for 0.1 seconds or how does that work, right? Or is it a symbolic amount of time that is then subsequently specified? But, you know, yes, yes the, I'm, I'm saying one thing that would already be very useful right, which is an enhancement to our existing sound note mechanism, would be to say, I want the, you know, the, the you know, G major scale or something, right? Give me the notes for that. Yeah. That's already useful. We don't have to build any of this other stuff to do that. But so long as we have a representation of music notes that is going to work in this much more elaborate music score yeah. system, we can do that. And that's the thing that would be pretty straightforward. We, we, put a lot of work into the Wolfram Alpha versions of this. We've got all the data tables. We've got all of the, you know, little yeah. algorithms for doing this. You know, we can implement that. So I, I agree. But the point is that the stuff that is involved in Wolfram Alpha is not really compatible with the square. And this is why I'm saying that a good starting point would be trying to understand as much as possible and import as much as possible. I'm sorry, what do you mean it's not compatible? I mean, it's, it's what, what are you talking about? The, 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 the details of its representation are not what we'll want to use, but there's tons of code that does things like, you know, figuring out, uh, you know, that, that has tables of, of um, you know, yeah, 200 that, that things like that. Yes. Right? I mean, there's, and, and there's also non-trivial code to do with, uh, you know, what is this chord? I, I don't know. I mean, there's a, there's a bunch yeah. of detailed stuff there. I don't understand why you say it's not compatible. What, what do you mean? The, the whole what a note is structure. Um, no, I have no doubt that it's different. I mean, it'll be some simple yeah. symbolic representation that isn't the same symbolic representation. But, you know, I can't imagine that's going to be terribly complicated yeah. to convert. Computation about pitches we can definitely reuse. Right. But I mean, I think that's where we want to start. So, I mean, the way I see it is we start by having something where we can deal with notes where right now we have something that says sound note of C sharp, right? It's, it's a very simple thing that we can't reason about at all, right? We couldn't say, you know, transpose that, move it up by five semitones. We can't do that, right? We don't have a way to do that. So I, I think the I, first I think... step is to be able to do those kinds of things. I mean, think about it this way. If we're doing image processing, first thing you do is, is you know, color manipulation. That's the kind of thing we're talking so about. I think, I think I agree with you. I, I just was being trapped up by language here uh, because I think what you're really talking about is pitches rather than notes. Perhaps, but it's symbolically named notes. I want to know that yeah. five semitones above C sharp is... Yeah. So, so I would is, call those pitches rather than notes. notes. I, I mean, I, I thought pitches were things like, you know, 440 hertz. No, not necessarily. Okay, yeah. all right, fine. But okay, but this is a language problem. I think we agree on what uh, th that this issue should be reasonably simple. Right, but th so then I think that the, the workflow here is first try to get a little bit more fleshed out the, the overall symbolic design. Yeah. Out of that will fall this representation of music note, whatever, maybe it's sound note, and, and a bunch of functions that just deal with what you're calling pitch manipulation. Yeah. Right? That sounds good. And then, you know, which will be things like generating scales, you know, moving by a certain amount, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's first step, seems to me. Another step is, you know, how do we handle, well, there's all kinds of things to do with time and how long a note plays for, what's, what's in accord with what, those kinds of things. We have a representation of that in the whole sound, sound note system. Um, you know, maybe there is a more symbolic representation that is needed. Yes. Okay. So we should figure that out. That's sort of another level up. Right. And, and similarly with notes right now, we just have, you know, 0.1 seconds. 
but we don't have, you know, this is a, boy, you know, I learned this stuff in England where they're called crotchets and quavers and things like that. I think in American yeah. they're called half notes and things like this, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. The, uh, not that I know much about this at all, but <laughs> the, the um, um, but, but okay, so, so, you know, when you say a half note or something, Right now, we only give a number of seconds. We don't. We're not. We don't have a mechanism of saying this is a half note. Yeah, that right. is a fundamental thing to be able to specify. I agree. Well, right, but, but so the way we think about that is, in sound note, we probably want a symbolic specification of that time. So a quantity specification of that time, for example. So point one would be point one seconds. You know, half note would be a half note. Maybe music note would have a different default for what that second argument means. And it would be the note, you know, the note specified duration rather than an absolute duration. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, that, that is crucial, having being able to specify this. No, but I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a, a particular thing. So sound note, the second argument is the time in seconds, right? Yeah. That's how it works. Yep. So music note might default, but you might be able to give sound note a time in note numbers, so to speak. Do you understand what I'm saying? Using a quantity. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I'll, I'll have to think about the compatibility between the two specific. No, 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 look, look. The whole point is that is not telling you by default, there has to be some overarching thing that says, you know, what the metronome setting is, so to speak, right? Yeah. Which, which is going to tell you the conversion between notes and actual time. Am yes, I making yes. sense? Whereas, and what I'm suggesting is a difference between music note and sound note. Sound note is a raw you know, note with a default specification in seconds. Music note could have a default specification in, I don't know what they're called, you know, note, note times, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, sure. Right? And, you know, uh, but, but you can... Um, uh, okay, there's a there's a question here. Um, uh, let's see. Um, <laughs> Sandra is asking that uh, is saying Carlo that uh, you have a great accent. I agree. The, the combination Italian Scottish I, I don't know what it is anymore is really is really a classic. Excellent. Um, Excellent. The, um, uh, anyway, somebody is is giving a um, oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's interesting, right. I think that that's I mean we people have, have built a variety of these things. For, for representing, um, I don't know whether there are things in the function repository. Are there things in the function repository re relative to? I think something like that is just already in Voltham Alpha as well, right? It is. It absolutely is. I, do, I just don't know where. I, I don't know whether that's exposed in the function repository, and arguably it should be. I mean, because that's, again, you know, that type of thing, like draw that piano view, that's very useful. That is a, a, an, easy, an easy thing to do. I agree. But, but I mean, see, the thing is, okay, this is why I'm pushing back a little bit on this discussion in general, is, you know, there are hard things to do, and there are easier things to do. And let's not, you know, let's not forget the easier things, which are already extremely useful, even yeah. before we tackle, you know, we've been meaning to tackle sort of the full symbolic representation of scores for at least a decade. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously hard. And, yeah. you know, we shouldn't sort of block on that and not do the easy. No, I agree. This this representation of um, um, is uh, um, um, yeah. I mean, the you know the the being able to draw these kind of pedagogical representations is very useful. And you know, for example, we don't have we have some capability in Wolfram Alpha to draw. Um, you know, I mean, we obviously have this basic rendering of. Um, of musical uh, notation. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously we should support that in some easy way. Look, perhaps the first thing to do is to get into the function repository, functions that do things like that picture, this picture, and so on. You know, and, and try to build up from there using 
with some simple music note representation and just you know make sure we have the code that does all of these different things before we solve the full problem of music scores and so on yeah well carlo if you recall the whole music package from alpha is in kernel now yeah yeah no i, I am aware that's that's um, there we have looked at it um i'm just unsure if uh, i agree we 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 should start we could start doing smaller things easier things first just let's not lose the big picture so i that think that i'm i'm pretty confident that the fundamental big picture is the sort of hierarchy of symbolic objects that yep. starts with notes and so on yes and, i don't want no. The, the, the thing I want to avoid is doing the easy thing and then the easy thing made the difficult thing even more difficult. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's going to happen because I think that we, we pretty much understand what the... Look, the one thing you need to check is things that are, you know, note-to-note -note communication, so to speak. Things that where, where that hierarchy isn't going to work. Yes. Right? That, those are the things I'm concerned about. And that's something we should look at in Music XML, try and look at it with other music traditions yeah. than the Western one that, that more of us understand. Um, the... Uh, uh, you know, check that that hierarchy still works. If it does, I think the coast is clear for doing things that just work at the level of individual notes. Yep. And, um, okay. Uh, Priority, right. Stephen, that we touched on. I told Carlo earlier this week, we do 10, 20% max on it before 12.3 so that other projects well, yes, have a but chance I mean, of but We finishing. need to actually make, look, the... Getting function repository entries for things that are, have been in alpha for a decade doesn't seem incredibly difficult. Nor does it yep. even seem like Carlo is necessarily the person who has to do that. Um, but I think, you know, making sure that we have a reasonable design, which I think is another, you know, if you come with a more detailed analysis of music XML and so on, um, I think- yeah, That was my thought for the next step. Mm -hmm. Right. I think we can nail that in another hour, probably, um, of, of making sure we're not making any heinous design mistakes there. Then I think the coast is clear to go and start making functions that deal with what you're calling pitch analysis, you know, pitch computations, and then take it from there. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I think you're... Yeah, I mean... The, the question of to what extent we can use generic symbolic computation things like cases and position and so on to figure things out, I do not yet know yet, or whether we're going to have to have things which are more specific, just like, you know, even with strings, we don't get to use generic cases. We have string cases, so to mm -hmm. speak. Yeah, um, I just don't know. In this we case. don't have a, a hierarchy of heads inside them. With this, we would. This is why I'm kind of optimistic, but I also don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I think that needs to be figured out. All right. Um, I need to run, gosh. We're, um, uh, well, good start, much to do. Um, thanks, everybody, and thanks to everybody on the live stream. And, um, uh, oh, look, I'm signed up to do a, a science and technology Q&A for kids, very different thing in one hour after two other things I'm supposed to do. So I need to run off now. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Okay.